On this episode of the Star Trek Universe podcast, we are discussing Star Trek Lower Decks 208, I Excretus, <laughs> right after this very important word from our mystery sponsors. Welcome to the Star Trek Universe Podcast, the podcast where you get to listen in on the continuing Star Trek conversation that two lifelong friends have been having since they were six years old. My name is Matthew Carroll. I am David C. Robertson. What is happening, Dave? Ah, man. <laughs> I'm just getting lots of followers on Twitter because I like Lower Decks. Like, <laughs> Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, the gatekeepers didn't like Boimler's uh, butthole. Boimler's butthole? Yeah, man. Did I miss you something? Uh, do you remember the uh, the naked time? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah trial the naked time and, trial. Sure, right. Yeah, she goes into the mess hall, and uh, they're sitting on the, uh, I guess, the bar or a table or something. Is Boimler with both legs outstretched in opposite directions with his asshole shining, and they had a black bar over his privates and his butthole, of course. Oh, but yes, yes, yes. Everyone's been sharing, like, the, the angry Trek gatekeepers have been sharing that photo around being like, this is what Star Trek has come to? <laughs> and I'm like, if Roddenberry had had complete creative control, it would have gone much further already. <laughs> like, he would have had a shuttle going inside of a butthole for sexual pleasure. I am telling you. Okay. He would have. Maybe so, man. Maybe so. I, yeah. I, 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 I mean, this is obviously silly and this is, uh, mm-hmm. particularly this episode is, is, is pretty silly and it's fun and it's super self referential. I loved all this. I loved all the trials. Uh, th- this is the episode for those of you who are listening in the distant future where we have, uh, a, person coming on the ship and they flip the uh, bridge crew in the lower decks and make them go mm-hmm. through simulated trials. And uh, it's, it's, it's fun. It's a lot of fun to see uh, the crew taking on like kind of just trite missions from past, whatever, like, you know, yep. or whatever. I, I love, I love that. Like here's old, old West town. And she's like, ah, classic <laughs> specter of the gun. Mm hmm. <laughs> and I, I love it uh, when they're like, yeah, we're going to do one using the bridge. It's like, you have to steal the Cerritos and go uh, and go to the Genesis planet to save Spock. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yep. that It was a lot of fun. I I don't know that I have much more to say about it. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Uh, and not every episode has to be, um, not every episode has to be some, you know, great uh, character development. I will say I loved that. Like, despite the fact that she was tinkering with everything, Boimler still was the only person on the, on the ship who was just getting really good grades. Yeah. 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 I like that. And, too. um, and I hate that like at the end of it, he failed essentially because he was saving the ship. Yeah. I really hope I know this is called lower decks, I really don't want Boimler to be like the next Harry Kim. I would love all of them to wind up ranking up. Like, I don't, I care less about it being called Lower Decks and more about like them eventually becoming better at their jobs. Sure. Absolutely. I, I, I think that's fun. Um, that could be a lot of fun. And there was a lot, another line in this episode that I thought was even more telling um and and you know you could say what you will but she never took it back the captain's mm-hmm. running down the hall dealing with the um uh lady that's floating in three parts or whatever yeah <laughs> and she says, and him. yeah yeah she says she's he's one of our best talking about boimler and uh-huh. uh and mariner's like he is which i thought was a <laughs> it was a joke but it was also like the captain just said boimler's one of her best and i and i think she would know more because of her years of experience, more than Mariner right. would, you know. Yeah, I that and was, Mariner that was would be one of the best if she ever tried. Yeah, absolutely. And I would love for those characters. Like, I think Boimler would be one of the best if it wasn't for his fear, and she would be one of the best if it wasn't for you know her not trying. So, I would really love to see those guys, like, you know get over their stuff and, and, yeah. and level up. I think this episode is when lower X is kind of at its best. And you mentioned, there's not much else to say. Like 
basically this episode is just, I mean, like it has, it had like the structure of them having to solve a problem, but like Mm -hmm. it really was just like a series of jokes, you know? And, and that's when the show is at its best is just like when it's not really trying to do anything too, too important, but like Mm -hmm. making lots of jokes under the structure of like characters that you care about enough you know? <laughs> oh yeah. And, uh, yeah. I like it. I like it. I like it. And there's lots of good jokes to mention. Um, I love the, uh, we have, we're getting a stress signal from a ship. It looks like they're caught in a temporal causality loop. Mm-hmm. And we're, no, getting we're getting another, it again. We're getting another message from the same <laughs> ship. It's the same message. Yep. That's a temporal causality loop. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I enjoyed it. There was a lot of little chuckle lines. Uh, there were a couple of lines that actually made me really laugh. I loved Shaxx being like, wait a minute, everyone on this ship is equal. They sleep in a hallway. Oh. <laughs> 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 and they leave them out there. Yeah, right before that, they leave them out there on the, uh, whatever, fixing the relay or something like that. And then they bring them back in, half frozen. And then they're like, nothing a little lung rejuvenation can't solve. <laughs> right. <laughs> so silly my wife and i both really laughed in the mirror in the mirror hologram whereas uh is um mirror billups and um rutherford mm-hmm. they're like nothing makes me horny hornier than torturing someone i'm horny all the time and being horny always gets me in the mood to torture oh you can lose a whole day to that cycle <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's really good <laughs> really good and of course it's naked time uh, was was pretty great. <laughs> Just yeah, and and it's naked time. And then later, when he's stretching on the bridge, cutting yes. back to um, I, I'm forgetting Shax. Shax is uh, mm-hmm. Shax being naked and yelling. It's naked time. It's pretty great. Yeah, uh, you must help me kill myself. I broke my back picking up a peanut. <laughs> I must have an honorable death. No, you must no. do it with the blade. <laughs> That was a lot of fun. That was, it was fantastic. It was really great. And the and the little nurses running over and being like, oh no, time of life. Uh, whatever. <laughs> it's really stupid. Really stupid, Please. but funny. <laughs> I laughed still. I enjoyed it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's great. Oh man. <laughs> the, the, the nurses are trying to work on him to see if they'll die. And they say, the Klingons are so tough. So many backup organs. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even catch that. That's good. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> That's good. Uh, uh, I think my favorite absolute line was the, uh, when, when the bridge crew are doing their training module and, the guy just like comes in and says, "Incense, stop moving around." <laughs> <laughs> and he gives them some order, but like, just stack the crates or whatever. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I just laughed and I was like, "Did he just say stop moving around?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. My favorite in that same scene is uh, one of my favorites was. <laughs> he comes in and is like, have you guys seen Q around here? And he's like in a Robin Hood, uh, Robin Hood outfit. outfit. Yeah, yeah. it's like he's Cupid. Like, have you guys seen Q around here? And he says, Q is on the ship? And he says, forget I said anything. And he just walks away. <laughs> and then he like comes right back and he's like, is that a Jim Hadar? Red alert! <laughs> or whatever it is. That was fantastic. <laughs> it just, it's just a silly, silly, full of silliness and full of just like lots of references. And I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just because I came of age right when the Borg were like at their height of their powers and we were all loving the Borg and we were reading about the Borg and watching the uh-huh. Borg and, you know, and before, before Voyager d- overdid it a little bit. But like, I still get excited for a Borg thing. And even if it's, uh, the, in the, um, simulator i was still just excited to see boimler with the borg and and the resolution and also the, the baby borg are, are brought back from like the first borg encounter indeed that was neat the baby borg the baby borg drawers <laughs> <laughs> it really surprisingly look like the drawers that they put like picard's clothing in yeah. they like when they like yeah. abducted him like dude i would i would love if I would have loved if they would have made fun of that, if they would have opened a drawer and 
there's baby Borgs. He grabs them. He opens another drawer and it's just like carefully folded Starfleet uniforms. <laughs> it's like, why? Why, Borg? Um, but no, I, I, more exciting for me than the baby Borg, uh, the Borg Queen and Borg Queen a- voiced by Alice Krieger from who played the Borg Queen in First Contact. Oh, neat. That's awesome. That's really And neat. she was, I think she was also the Borg Queen in uh, Voyager Endgame, the final episode. Yeah. I believe. Yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember you talking about that last year when we were talking about who was playing her in the news, who might be playing her in a different season or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. I liked, uh, I liked her, one of her lines a lot when she says, wow, your design very nearly passes for human, which is clearly a reference mm-hmm. to data. And then, and then he's like, I am human. And he's, he's like, well, you need to drink some water. Your skin is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> which is uh-huh. hilarious given that you're talking to a Borg and they're telling yeah. you your skin's a mess. <laughs> I don't know. It's good. It's good stuff. Yeah. It was very enjoyable. And probably and, and, right. Right. He says, he says, but I have asthma and whatever else. He names a bunch of problems. He has, I might be a net negative for the collective. <laughs> <laughs> and then they name him Excretus. <laughs> uh, it's really good. Oh my gosh. The the best thing, like I take it back. Instant stop moving around was not my favorite. The thing I laughed hardest on was like where Shax was like, one thing the Borg didn't take from you was your appetite. He was like, they took everything I was. Yeah, as, as everyone's laughing, the classic like <laughs> sitcom pan out from the exterior shot. Yeah. Everyone's laughing and he goes, they took everything that I was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Which man. I guess is a good, it's a good, uh, problem to have that I keep saying, no, this was the best thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really good episode, honestly. Like, I think this was firing on all cylinders. Really liked it. I agree. And both the bridge crew and the Lower Decks people, they learned a valuable lesson. Mm-hmm. About, you know, stuff. I, th- I think I think I like <laughs> the show when it has episodes that are serious. They'll like have a lot of character development. And I like this show when it just is silly fun like this episode is. Yeah. But I think when it fails for me is when it tries to straddle the fence too much and it's Mm. not funny enough for me to just enjoy it. And it's not serious, not taking itself seriously enough for me to take it seriously. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I I I think I'm, I'm sort of formulating that as I'm thinking about, cause like there's a a lot of episodes where I'm like, you know, I just wish they hadn't thrown in that silly joke because I cared about what the plot was doing. Um, yeah. And it didn't, it didn't actually make sense with what they were talking about. Like it's not taking the actual star Trek of it seriously, but in in this episode, I don't care. Well, part of it, it's, it's all simulations, so they can do whatever they want, which it, 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 this, this episode was well designed for this kind of silliness as well. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. And yeah, I, I liked that uh, they both earned appreciation for each, each other's group and whatnot. So that was a lot of fun. I like that they got better replicators at the end. <laughs> yeah, me, me too. That, and, and they even say it at the end. They're like, that's actually really sweet. <laughs> like, and it, and it was, it was a nice, sweet moment for the, uh, <laughs> the, um, you know, bridge crew to acknowledge that they have a hard time. And, uh, you know, if you're going to work hard, you at least deserve to eat, eat, eat what you need and <laughs> 10 meals. Yeah. We have pesto. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> they sleep in a hallway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I <clears throat> what? I have to keep going, but I beat the board queen in chess and taught her empathy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so stupid, but it's so good. Yeah, yeah. Really enjoyable. Man. Uh, 
I think that's all that I have, though. Yeah, man, that that's all the things I wrote down that I loved. Um, and I, it was just a good episode. Really good episode. Yeah, I, I enjoyed seeing another Pandronian. Uh, we haven't seen those guys since uh, Star Trek the Animated Series, uh, the episode BIM. Uh, <laughs> this character's name was Yim. Hmm. <laughs> she was the one doing the doing the tests. So, um, cool. Yeah, that was it, man. that was fun. Well, uh, you, you, how's everything with you? You doing all right? Any any new uh, content things you're watching or anything? No, not really. I um, well, I guess so. I, I'm <laughs> I bought Doctor Sleep, the director's cut tonight. So I'm. Looking forward to watching that. That's you know what that is. Have you, yeah, have you, I have not seen it yet, but I, I know it's the yeah sequel uh, sort to the of shining. To the shining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm interested in that, and I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm cool. <laughs> watching Doom Patrol and Titans and Star Wars oh, yeah. and all that crap. Man, yeah, I haven't seen any of that yet. <laughs> not that I, it's crap. I'm liking it all. I heard. Uh, I watched the first couple episodes of Doom Patrol and liked it. Um, but I just didn't, I just haven't had time to get back to it. You know, and I started watching tonight because I needed something I could put on in the background. And I've been told for years, this has a lot of redeeming qualities. I started watching Babylon five tonight. Ooh. Yeah. You know what? I, it's all on HBO max Mm -hmm. and like they up converted it to HD or something. And, um, I made it about 10 minutes into it and I was just like, I can't do it right now. Yeah, I'm definitely it's, using uh, video speed control. Uh-huh. <laughs> On, uh, I, I was told by uh, Matthew <clears throat> Fox loves the show. He says it's like really, really great, like ethical issues and stuff. Like once you uh-huh. get into the show, and I was like, cool. I'd like, to, I really want to get to that part. So I got into it. And I, so far, the second and third episode I liked a lot. The first episode is an hour and a half, and it's really slow and not well done. Um, and there's yeah. just, you don't care. It, it introduces you in a way that like, I don't know. I didn't care about any of the characters enough to care about the story in the first episode. So the first mm-hmm. episode is, is pretty rough for that first hour and a half, but at, you know, 1.7 X speed, it's not so bad. It's, uh, it's only about an hour of a bad episode. <laughs> I am very nearly at the point where I feel that way about every TV show in my life. Like I, I watch everything. Everything moves too slowly. Like I have to watch everything at like one, you know, one and a half speed. Yeah, like I can't do it. I I don't do that with new content that I'm really that I love because um, I I want to enjoy it the way it was intended to be enjoyed. But like if it's mm-hmm. it, it, if it's old enough. That it's just something I'm never going to get to if I don't watch it at fast time, at fast speed. Yeah. Also, those older shows are just paced way slower. And so, like, you know, I mean, sometimes I'll be watching Star Trek. I'll be watching a Deep Space Nine episode and they have one of those super slow pans across the hallway. And I'm just like four times speed just to get past that, like, super slow pan across the hall. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I like how you're announcing it as you're doing it with your hand. Like you're telling the computer, oh, yeah. four times speed computer. <laughs> yes, I'm like, <laughs> but I call it Ensign. <laughs> ensign, <laughs> warp speed <laughs> to the next scene. Cadet Mouse. <laughs> click, 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 click. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, I'm excited. To, I'm excited to check that show out. I need to get to, uh, I need to get back to Doom Patrol. That seemed, that seemed good. Did you just, were you, did you watch like the I watched first the two episodes of first, the first season? Yeah. 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 Okay. Cause it's like, they just started the third season. Yeah. I've only seen like the first episode or two of the first season. Yeah. I think it may okay. have just been the first actually. Now that I'm put piecing it together in my brain, what I actually watched. Yeah. I mean, you got to get to Curtis Armstrong voicing a uh, street preacher roach named Ezekiel. All right. That does sound interesting. That does sound interesting. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I guess that's about it for Star Trek Universe podcast tonight. We're keeping it short tonight because we are recording really late and I have so much to do tomorrow. So we're not going to, we're not going to, we're not going to bother you guys with lots of adventures of Matt and Dave. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I uh, could. Oh, but yeah. But I won't. Yeah. That's, that's true. That's true. I could too. But Just remember we'll that for next week. Remember that when your boot is on my throat.
I once showed you mercy. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. All right. <laughs> Jolan True. <laughs> Live long and prosper. Thank you for listening to the Star Trek Universe Podcast, a Stranded Panda production. If you'd like to hear more from David C. Robertson, check out the DC On Screen Podcast or maladjusted.tv for his web videos. If you'd like to hear more from Matthew Carroll, check out the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast or listen to his music. Just search for Matthew Carroll anywhere you get music. 